<laughs> but we're gonna hike the urban jungle, folks. Yeah, I guess it is. <laughs> Good morning, Boston. Hope this rain holds off, yeah. so we can do a. What are we gonna? We're gonna do like a two and a half mile historic walk. Is that right? Is that still the plan? Yes. Rain or shine, folks. It's called the Freedom Trail. Yeah. And it's supposed to take us through some historic sites, and I believe we have a tour guide. Um, we're gonna find out once we get to the, the Boston yes. Commons Visitor Center and they are going to tell us where to sign up for all of that stuff. I like the walking tours. You got your Fitbit on? I do. We're gonna get our 10,000 steps in, that's for sure. Ten and a half miles. Mm -hmm. Mr. Brown's getting some rest. Which is always good. Which is always good, especially before a two and a half mile hike. Does everybody else feel good? Everybody else ready to hike this city? Yeah. Yes. It's funny you say hike, because I think of a hike in the woods. <laughs> The Freedom Trail. Beauty's inside getting tickets. Looks like that's a guide right over there. Nice. He's in character. Freedom Trail, the next guided tour at 3 o'clock. Next Freedom Trail guided tour at Clock. North Carolina. They're from North Carolina, right. So we know everybody's from. Nobody's here from England. Good. Welcome to Boston. My name is Captain Daniel Malcolm. Not Mr. Daniel Malcolm. Captain Daniel Malcolm. I'm not allowed to film him. So let me sum up what he just said here. That's of interest. This park here, they used to graze cattle, sheep, animals here. It's actually still legal to this day, as long as you're a resident of Boston. I'd love to see that. Somebody raise a livestock on this field. That was the Boston Commons. What'd you learn about the Boston Commons? Um, what are you gonna remember that tomorrow? John Hancock was a party animal. They would party till three o'clock. Apparently, in the he liked John to really Hancock. party, and the cows grazing, and like it was like a lot smaller. Like Boston was a lot smaller than it is now. This has been filled in. It was like one square mile, which is kind of crazy. Uh. It was real small. <laughs> Interesting. They would hang pirates and other criminals there. The parents were encouraged and brought their children so that the children could see and it would supposed to be an example like this is what's going to happen if you misbehave Fifteen thousand people buried here, estimated, including Paul Revere. Wait a minute. John Hancock, Samuel Adams, and other famous people. Sam Adams' grave. Interesting fun fact. There's a bar over there. You could get a cold Sam Adams. Only place in the world. Drink a cold Sam Adams and see the grave. Fun fact, Sam Adams had nothing to do with the beer company. John Hancock's grave. Paul Revere, famous for alerting the colonists that the British were coming. And he didn't say the Redcoats are coming or the British are coming, he said the regulars are coming. Because everyone considered themselves British. Yeah, we're all coming. We're all British. So, I thought that was an, a fun fact. That was the first Anglican church in Boston, which is ironic because that's what the Puritans were running from in the first place. 
it's kind of mean of the king to do that, but I guess he had to show who was boss. Because the king couldn't buy the land or lease the From land, the of course no Puritan's going to do that. He confiscated it and planted that church there. Which incidentally went on to be the first Unitarian church, the first church to have an organ. Do you remember any of the other firsts? I don't know. about the Cradle of Freedom? So basically a lot of stuff happened there. <laughs> well one thing that's interesting is that like ships could sail right up to it so there's like a bunch of buildings that way and I mean, we're there. Have them, uh, land yeah. there now. Funerals were held there and For Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson politics was 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 talked about in the upper room. They did they had shops at the bottom. Time to go back to Maple. Did anybody learn anything? Yeah. Yeah. Back in the car into the five o'clock. Rush hour traffic, we picked a heck of a time to leave beauty. Wow, well, it's not our fault, it's the rain. So hey, what what time what did you learn? Did you learn anything, Lily? Uh, Just that, what'd you learn on that tour? Um that the cow lived on a pasture. Yeah, they could graze the pasture right in the middle of the city. What'd you learn, buddy? They threw all the tea off the boat in protest. Yeah. Just Gideon, what'd you learn? Um, what is? Horsey. Yeah. Oh, we learned about the horsies. Oh. And we talked about Paul Revere's horse. Oh, that's right. Paul like Revere that. rode the horse. We're heading back to Maple now. We leave the town tomorrow. Where are we going, Beauty? We are headed to near Acadia. Acadia National Park. We are going well, not to going May. all the way there, but yes. Where are we going tomorrow? We're going to our campground. So. <laughs> Okay, travel day tomorrow. We're going into Maine. Three cool places in Maine. Mm -hmm. Acadia National Park. Jim, you guys remember him? Farm down in South Florida. He's now up in Maine getting started. And we're going to your childhood, lifelong. Take a slight left turn. And then we're going to your, she's looking at me crazy because that's not right, so I won't say that. We're going to a blueberry farm that you've been in love with for a long time. We cold called them, they opened up their arms to us, which is not always the case with a cold call. We about give up on cold calls, but that one has redeemed it. Are these blueberries you've bought? No, I haven't bought them yet. I'm going to when we go there. Okay, so how do you know about this farm? I got into blueberry tea and I wanted to find, I just started researching blueberry farms that made blueberry tea. Like I just wanted to ah. get a better blueberry tea than I was buying at my local store because I didn't think it was, I think it wasn't real blueberries. And so then I was like, well, uh, why am I drinking this? And Is this real blueberry tea where we're going? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, they sell in Maine and they sell online and everything. So you guys can. Maine, here we come. Jim, Acadia, and the epic blueberry farm. Before we close out this vlog, the beautiful one has a word of encouragement she got from one of her Facebook friends posts. This girl was in our in a youth group that we worked in. She's now like 30. And she is just a really great encouragement. Her name is Whitney and we love her to death. And we may see her on the vlog when we hit her city. Anyways, she was posting about that. Basically, we are holding a bunch of balls in our arms and we're walking through life and the balls represent peace. And some people are coming along trying to take the balls out of our arms 
And then there's people that we meet in our lives that are trying to help us pick up the balls that have been taken out of our arms and put them back in so that we can live a whole and peaceful life. And it just really spoke to me today that I want to be the latter. I want to be someone who's encouraging. I want to be someone who's loving. I want to be someone who's restoring people to their whole peaceful self. It was a really great post. I really was encouraged by her and what she was having to say and I have no idea where I'm going. Okay. That was another thing that she said is that we need to not allow people so much power to get the balls out of our arms. And so I take that as an encouragement.